Yo, what's up guys? So we got BTS Wing short film number six, Mama. I thought Big Hit would release this like a week from now or a month from now because we all got used to the whole daily release with these short films and I know that they love to like switch up whatever we're expecting and they're going to do the opposite. But it kind of makes sense though, right? Because Big Hit's smart. Big Hit knows that we view them in a way where we're expecting them now to switch things up. We expect them to switch up whatever expectation we had. So they're like, you know what, let's really mess with the audience and just keep doing one every day and they're going to expect it to be different. We're just going to completely blow their minds. That's what I think is happening. I think it's just like insane reverse psychology but like six dimensions deep. I, I don't even know at this point. You need to ask them. You guys told me that English subs were mas importante for this, so I went ahead and got those. We're good. Let's go ahead and get into this. All right, big hit. What do you got today? Big hit. With a face that resembled her son's. Timeless. Her son. Ageless. And full of inner strength. The beautiful woman smiled with dignity. Hmm. Her gaze was fulfillment. Her gritting a homecoming. Silently, I stretched my hands out to her. Makes sense, right? It's about the mama. Yo, is that Jay Hope? What up, Jay Hope? Oh, well, what's that? All right, we're gonna have to go back and pause on that. Rocking the Jamie Jams. Is that one o'clock? That's a weird looking clock for some reason. What's happening? Okay, that's that's a little overkill, don't you think? <laughs> the doctor's trolling him. Yo, yo, yo! Lie, right? The cocktail glass with the pills and the graffiti from like crap. I'm forgetting stigma. Yo, it's like the pill made him crazy. It's like he was normal before. Yo, he is not doing well. Oh, snap, yo. That's like, that's like when he, the last time with the trilogy, the, the I need you, when he took the pill and then he's like blap on the sidewalk and we're all like, duh. Oh, I think he's good now. There's that, there's the painting, the, the picture from like the lie with uh, with Jimin, right? I guess he can just walk out whenever he wants. The sky is blue and the sun is shining. All right, so. <laughs> oh, there he is, he's back. He's good, we got J-Hope back, guys. See, all you needed was a Snickers. <gasps> Yo, and we're seeing what he saw. Mother and son. Ava, Ava, which from the Spark Notes. Ava, that's the mother of Damien. Wait, did they really just combine that with uh, V's circle? Like I thought it would be with Jimin's circle, right? I mean, we saw a lot of crossover symbolism with like J-Hope and Jimin, but no, they did it with V instead. That's the, they combined the circle. We weren't expecting that. Man, that kind of threw me off a little bit there, but, but I think it's important to mention that. I don't think Big Hit ever tries to throw you off. I don't think with whatever they do, I don't think their intention is to throw us off track. I think their intention is to incite more discussion, to get the theories rolling. I think everything is connected beautifully behind the scenes. It's just we're not part of Big Hit's staff, so we just don't know. So we're trying to piece together the puzzles, and they're just throwing us more pieces, which could be to a completely different puzzle, but we're still trying to figure out one puzzle, and they're like, yo, they don't even know that Big Hit made like a hundred puzzles already back in the early music videos when we weren't even looking at those music videos as puzzles in the first place. Can we just like address that Snickers bar for a second? Like, I think I need to, I need to process that the most. Okay, so like immediately I was thinking, all right, that's product placement of a Big Hit. Like, they need to pay for this all somehow. So there you go. That's an opportunity. But then I think no, they don't ever put anything in these for no reason They don't ever include things in these short films that aren't part of their grand master plan You know, it's all missonance. They don't have anything in here. That's pointless So I think the Snickers was just an opportunity They're thinking we need him to eat something. So let's just 
just get that in there with product placement. But ultimately what that was showing was the link between his mental state and Jamin's mental state. All right, so before continuing this analysis, let's go back and just pause real quick on that doctor sheet that he was filling out. Right here, it says mood, anxious, and irritable, thought process, illogical, and <laughs> retarded. And we got assessment, Munchausen syndrome? Question mark? All right, we gotta, we gotta look this up. I'm no WebMD, I'm an engineer. All right, Google. So here it says that it is a fictitious disorder. What? It's a mental disorder in which a person repeatedly and deliberately acts as if he or she has a physical or mental illness when he or she is not really sick. That's crazy to me, guys. All right, so this could be saying one of two things. Either A, there's nothing wrong with J-Hope. He has no physical or mental disorder. It's all in his head. He thinks he does. He has things haunting him from his past, probably the death of his mother, who he seemed very close to. And it's basically just a cry for help, saying, I'm so hurting. There's got to be something wrong with me. Please fix me. The other thing it could be saying is that he does actually have a mental disorder, but the doctors don't recognize it. They don't have a name for it. They can't label it the way that doctors want to. So they just say, oh, there's nothing wrong with them. Yet they were still more than happy to throw pills at him. So that might have been a little jab to the medical industry. But either way, whichever one of those two possibilities is reality, we saw that the pills just made him more crazy. So he's not getting healed from the pills. He's not getting better or treated from these medications. The meds just made him straight up certifiable. I mean, he went nuts. He was just like going crazy as seeing paint and colors and whatever. He started tearing out the walls. There was feathers everywhere. And let's talk about the feathers for a second. The feathers, we saw in the trilogy, we saw in Lion, not just the feathers, the cocktail glass full of pills, the picture, they're all connections that Big Hit is drawing between J-Hope's story and Jamin's. They're saying they're intertwined. I think they used to be in the same place. I think they used to have that connection, if you will. They had that communication. Now they don't. And there's a reason for that. I think Jamin was swinging the pillow. He was swinging it at J-Hope. He was remembering J-Hope. And I think when J-Hope was pulling out those feathers, Big Hit was telling us that these dudes, they miss each other. They used to be in the same place. Now they aren't. And when we saw the cocktail glass full of pills and with Lai and Mama, I think that was Big Hit telling us very clearly that they struggle from the same mental illness. Jimin and J-Hope, they struggle from the same disorder. Probably depression, among other things, but the key difference between Jimin and J-Hope, the key difference between the two and their mental disorder is I believe J-Hope's condition is much worse. We saw back in I Need You when J-Hope took the pills and he eventually collapsed on the sidewalk. He had a suicide attempt, and I think that's the reason he was thrown in a padded room. That's why he had so many more pills thrown at him than Jimin. I think that the suicide attempt severed the connection between him and Jimin. I think it severed the communication between the two. What Jimin represented, what J-Hope represented, they're no longer able to contact each other. The communication has been severed. The relationship is on pause. If we look at the title real quick, Mama, paired with Ratman's intro from the book Demi, and I think that's just all saying that J-Hope, he's missing his mom. He probably had a strong connection to her. She's probably dead now. He's missing her. It's messing him up on the inside. He's prone to self-harm, causing all this internal torment and pain, probably paired with other things that just potentiate it and make it worse. Getting mental disorders from. He's getting medication because of those disorders. You got to ask yourself, what's the difference between a true mental disorder and believing that you have one enough that you're behaving the same way as if you had it in the first place? There isn't much of a difference if the end result is the same. You got to deal with the root issue. Every one of these short films has one thing in common. The character is dealing with their own internal struggle, their own past, their own walk, and they ultimately face the root issue. Now what they do about it and what the end result is has been different in every single one of these. And J-Hope faced his root issues at the very end, the very last scene when he was looking out of his cell door and we heard all those nature sounds. It's really important and we saw the painting. Now that painting is fake. It's not an actual landscape. It's just a picture of one and I think it's important to realize that he was still hearing the nature sounds in his head that was showing us an internal glimpse in his mind that he's completely wrapped up in the past on a deep level, that he's 100% focused on his root issue. I think that he was showing that he just really missed his mom and we saw a glimpse of that when he left and we saw the painting transform into a mother and her son. Dude missed his mama. He remembers her. You know, there's one thing to have never met your mom, but he clearly had a very strong relationship with her and I think he lost her and he's messed up from it. You know, we saw J-Hope just so depressed, so hurting throughout this whole short film just until the very end when he bit that Snickers bar looking at the picture, but not the picture we were seeing, the picture he was seeing. And we saw him for the very first time 
be J-Hope. We saw him smile. And then he just walked it off. He left. He left his cell and just walked and went about his merry way. And I think that was saying that he was self-admitted into the psychiatric facility, meaning he was free to leave whenever he wanted. He put himself in there and he left when he was ready. Now remember, this is very far from the end. There's a lot of questions that need answering. There's a lot of loose ends that need tying up, especially because they connected his circle to V's, which completely blew my mind. But that's a little wink saying you're just in for a ride. So buckle up. And I, I don't we love that though? Don't we just love the fact that this just keeps going? We don't really want it to end. We might think we do, but do we really? Like, just look deep down. We don't want it to end. Now, one thing we know for darn certain is when he took that mystery pill and went completely berserk and we heard those crazy, funky jazz beats, that's probably a clip from what will be one of the greatest BTS songs we've ever heard. Like, I just wanted more. I wanted that to be like an intro into the song, the entire music video, but you know, we're gonna have to wait for that. My question is, who's next? We've gone through six so far, six short films, so who's gonna be in number seven? I mean, they really like switching it up here on us. I feel like whatever we're gonna expect, it might not even be that, or, or maybe we expect it to be different, so they give us what we expected because it wasn't the expected difference in the first place. I, I don't know. We, no one really knows. We'll figure it out maybe tomorrow, maybe a week from now, maybe a month from now. You know, who knows what Big Hit's cooking up? Well, I guess I would know if I was secretly a freelance creative writer for Big Hit's production team. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please put your comments, your suggestions, your theories, anything that I missed down below. I want to hear from you guys. I read all the comments. Please subscribe if you have not already. That's a huge help to me. Definitely follow my Snapchat and my Twitter, and I will see you guys in part seven. Peace.